But it's not prayer that sets you free. It's truth. If there's one thing that I see we slip in and that we lack in and that we revert back on is truth. Truth is what makes you free. And it says this right after that in John. And he who the Son sets free is what? Free. free indeed. In other words, make no mistake about it. Free. Now here's the thing. We've been taught so much the opposite in the church for so long. We've so related to our ability to fail. We actually think to boast in our ability to sin is humility. You have to boast in His ability to keep you in righteousness. You have to boast in His ability to wash you and keep you clean. We have, we have lived in a false humility that boasts in our ability to fail and then we think that elevates God. When God tries to get you out of who you were and tuck you into who He is, is so that Christ in you is the hope of glory. He wants your conscience clear. He wants you empowered to live your life in Christ. If all you do is recognize your ability to sin and stay conscious of your weakness, you're going to be conscious of sin the whole time you're living your Christian life. You'll be on eggshells. You'll be condemned. You'll feel guilty. You'll feel bad. Anybody I've ever met that is trying not to sin is living in that place of guilt, condemnation, shame, always taking tests that God never put on the desk. You don't wake up and try not to sin. You wake up and enjoy being his son and daughter. You enjoy being clean. You enjoy being free. The whole point of that truth is to empower you to live different than you'd ever lived. All of a sudden, your desires change. Your capacity changes. And all of a sudden, grace is empowering you to live like you didn't even think was possible. And it's hard to talk about. In the church, because everybody blows a whistle and heresy flag and blasphemy, because we're all letting our own personal experience be our highest truth. But I'm not following you and me. I'm following Jesus. And I see how he lived right in the sight of God. And it empowers you to live a certain way. A lot of people say the only reason Jesus didn't sin is because he's God. But Jesus came as a man anointed by God and empowered by God. And we forget that a lot of the, a lot of the uh, emphasis on Jesus is his deity. He didn't want you to emphasize his deity if you look at his language. He wanted you to see that he came as a man empowered by God because you can't follow deity, but you can follow Christ in you. You can follow Holy Spirit. Right? We don't even consider this sometimes. And you get in trouble when you talk like this. And people have a lot to say sometimes because they're quick to speak and, and slow to listen. Jesus, wonder if Jesus had authority over sin and wonder if he didn't have trouble with the sin issue because he was completely selfless and sin had nowhere to land in his life. There's not a sin ever committed by a human being that wasn't attached to self-centeredness. There's not one sin you'll ever commit in your life that doesn't have selfishness at the root. I bet Jesus knows what he's talking about when he says, if you come after me, you're going to have to deny yourself because that's the platform of destruction in your life because you were never made for you. You were made for my image. Come on, we've turned it into pray this prayer and go to heaven. He said, deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me. That sounds like a different message. We preach if you die tonight and don't know where you're going, pray this prayer and you're covered. He preached, come out of darkness and come into the light. Lay down your life. Yeah? I don't know how to explain this and not get in trouble. Can you tell I'm always fired up when I'm preaching the gospel? Can you, did you ever see me on YouTube bummed out? I'm either an amazing actor and I got some crazy jacket I put on that just does something to me. Or there's something I see that freaks me out and I have to calm down enough to talk about it. Yeah? I'm not wrestling with sin, guys. When you talk like that, people freak out and think you're saying you're perfect and you never, ever sin. What I'm saying is it's never in my conscious awareness. It's not an issue. I'm not trying not to sin ever. It's two things I never think about in my life. Sin and the devil. Two things. Never think about sin and the devil. He crushed the power of sin in my life. I didn't wake up to sin. I woke up to be his son. I'm actually not threatened and afraid that I'm sinning every minute. There's actually a clear conscience in me. There's a holiness that is birthed in my heart through a righteous understanding. And I'm not thinking about the devil. He's a cut off withering branch coming to nothing and I'm not going to put him on a platform. Do you see what happens when you put people on a platform and give them a mic? They manifest. <laughs> Two things I hear people talk about all the time is sin and the devil. You're, you're, you'll never walk free 
from the, the sin, the effects of sin, the stain of sin, the drive of sin, the memory of sin, the regret of sin. You'll never walk free by pr trying not to sin. You walk free by understanding he took it all away. He's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He rose for your justification. That means you stand just as if you've never sinned. And when you try to preach this, there's a lot of people that have been in church their whole life preaching the opposite and they fight it and press it and don't realize they're fighting against the answer of walking free. They're fighting against the very thing he paid for. And they're doing it in the name of the Lord. <laughs> A song like that wraps me up, man. We're like, I'm free. And I'm thinking, I hope we understand what we're free from. I mean, what are we free from? If you're not free from yourself, you're bound to others. But if you're free from you, you're free from everybody. <laughs> Come on. If you've got selfishness in your life, you have so many limitations.